the tape, and you can see that Whitaker is younger, a half inch taller, has five inches more reach than Nelson. They are comparable in size, but where there are edges, they belong to Pernell Whitaker. And here is our punch stat numbers to give you a profile of how active these fighters are. In the compilation of their last three fights, as you can see, Whitaker threw about 10 more punches around and landed more punches than Nelson, but that's because he throws more jabs, and we'll show you those numbers, and here you can see them. Whitaker depends on the jabs. Nelson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Caesars Palace Sports Pavilion, where tonight main events monitor Dan Duba President and Don King Productions, in association with Caesars Palace, presents World Championship Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. James Nave, Chairman. The commissioners at ringside are Dwayne Ford, Dr. Elias Gunham, Jay Nady, and Luther Mack. The executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission is Chuck Minker. Representing the International Boxing Federation at ringside is Mr. Bob Lee, the president of that organization from New Jersey, and the supervisor at ringside, Mr. Al Goodman of Florida. Representing the WBC at ringside, Jose Suleiman of Mexico City, its president, and its supervisor, Roy Van Putten of the island of Aruba. The officials assigned by the governing bodies for the next bout of the evening, the judges will be Dolby Shirley of Las Vegas, Nevada, Harry Gibbs of England, and Sid Nathan of England. The timekeeper is Jane Broadfoot. Counting at the knockdowns, Mike Morabito. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Flip Pomansky and William Berliner. And your referee is Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF WBC lightweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting out of Accra, Ghana. Weighing in at 134 pounds, with a professional record of 32 wins, one defeat with 24 KOs. He is the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Azuma, the Warrior, Nelson. And in the blue corner, from Norfolk, Virginia, weighing an even 135 pounds. His professional record consists of 21 wins, one defeat with 12 KOs. He is the IBF, WBC, lightweight champion of the world, Burnell, Sweet Bean, Whitaker. Okay, now, all right, now look, if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low, okay? okay? Now, protect yourself at all times. You've already had your instructions in the dressing room. Any questions from the challenger, she's second. Any questions from the champion, she's second. Let's get it on. Come on. All right. Jim and Ray, fighters in the smaller divisions often lose it in their late 20s because quickness is so important to them. So I think the main question here is how much of his old quickness has Nelson been able to summon? to stay up to and to try to catch this wraith in front of him. Cornell Whitaker, unquestionably one of the quickest fighters in the sport. Mills Lane, in his 41st professional fight, wants it to start exactly right. Both fighters looked happy and comfortable in the minutes leading up to their pre-fight instructions from referee Mills Lane. These are two proven stars of the sport, no strangers to the spotlight. Whitaker begins with three straight jabs, and Nelson goes to the body. And what's going to give uh, Nelson the speed, because at a certain age, you do lose a little speed or what have you. But I think it depends on how much you want to win. And Azuma Nelson, he wants to win this fight so, so bad. He wants to do it for his people. Nelson told us yesterday he fully expected to have to stalk Whitaker around the ring said he would have no compunction about chasing the slightly bigger Whitaker. And that's what it took. 
Now you see what uh, Jim Nelson is doing. He's actually trying to walk down Purnell. He has those punches because he feels that Purnell cannot hurt him. There's the dip I was telling talking about earlier with Azuma Nelson. As he gets inside, he takes a dip. He goes under the punches of Cornell Whitaker. Whitaker also likes to dip his head low. There's a chance for an accidental bunt here tonight. Two fighters will go down when they're in close. Whitaker establishing the jab. with the Zuma Nelson, that was that problem with South Park. And the key is to keep your left foot outside his right foot. Because a lot of times you throw punches, you off balance. So the key for Zuma Nelson is keep that left foot on the outside of Hunter Whitaker's right foot. You saw Whitaker, who often likes to showboat, patting Nelson on the butt after he had turned the super featherweight champ around. Nelson has been regarded sometimes in the past as a headhunter, but he appears conscious of wanting to go to the body as he comes inside here. Yesterday, talking with Cornell, that him and Lou they stated the fact that he's not going to run anymore. He's just going to give angles. And this is what he's doing now. He caught Azuma with a pretty good left hand there because he's giving angles side to side, lateral movement. Whenever Nelson releases the right, Cornell is trying to come back over the top with the left hand. He's been effective with it so far. Those are the counter punches that I spoke of earlier, Jeff. He makes Azuma Nelson reach in, reach in a counter -trip. This is going to make all the difference in this fight, speed. If we don't keep this kind of, kind of tempo up, he can make an easy fight out of this. So far, he's been able to stick and step away, stick and step away. Good round for Brunel Whitaker. I right, see where you're the champ of the world, baby. Listen, listen. You're, you're doing just what you're doing, John. You understand? Just keep him looking for you. Now listen, relax. Yeah. You got him covered. You understand? Now he's swinging at you. Now you, how you feel about it? I feel good. Okay. Uh, now you got him covered. Now look, this is as good as this guy's gonna get. You know why? Because of what you're doing, John. Now don't change. You understand? When you get close, grab him up, walk. You understand? Walk. Let's go inside. Couple of combination. Inside, inside, inside and in That was an impressive round for Whitaker because it showed his evolution from a fighter who used to fight with his legs, just running and stabbing, to now using his quickness to get into punching position, not just bicycling around. So now he realized that he could get a man without moving so far back, so if he moved far back, he was not in a position to hit the man or counter him. Nelson told us that he would not throw the jab much in this fight, an admission that he's not particularly interested in trying to box with Whitaker. He wants to make him fight. In the first round, Nelson only threw four jabs, but Whitaker threw 45 of them. This is not really a good tactic for Azuma Nelson because in walking in with this type of style, he's going to be subjecting himself to a lot of punches. You must appreciate the hand speed of Colonel Whitaker. Every time someone else comes in to block shot, he's also losing points. Nelson manages to land a combination along the ropes as he tries to pick up the tempo. Whitaker comes back with a straight jab and the left of the rib kick. what happened in the corner. Colonel Wigner at the spin was able to spin Azuma. He threw a short shot to the midsection and it kind of bothered Azuma. He also grabbed Nelson's thigh and tried to lift it up. 
when he's trying to annoy him, he's trying to overpower him and frustrate him too. Finding a guy that can box is tough enough, but when you find a southpaw who does have things to the opposite side, it's very difficult, especially if he's a good boxer with good lateral movement. Like Michael Nunn, it's tough to beat a fighter guy like Michael Nunn because of his movement. Nelson had some trouble in the early rounds with a southpaw named Lupe Suarez. A tough time, gentlemen. As a matter of fact, he's having a tough time here against Cornell. to Nelson's face after he had locked his head under his arm. The crowd responded with warm humor. On the outside.